the wonderful 14.1 kilometer circuit runs deep in the Ardennes forest between the villages of Francorchamps, Malmedy and Stavelo. After the start, the cars go downhill, left right uphill through Eau Rouge, one of the best known corners in the world. After this rise, the road starts to drop down towards Berneville. Then comes the very fast open section at Malmedy. After Malmedy comes the long, famous Master Strait, where there is very little protection on either side of the road for any unforced errors by the drivers. Next is the tricky long S-bend near the railway station, and then on, dropping now towards Stavelo. We note that this is a road circuit, complete with houses, walls, telegraph poles, and all sorts of other objects at the side of the road. The 120 mile an hour Stavelo curve takes us back onto the return leg of the circuit. Drivers are climbing now, very slightly, with flat-out bends and a nasty drop into the field below, on the right of the road. On up towards Blanchiment, past the clubhouse, and so to La Source Hairpin, the only slow corner on the whole circuit, before returning to the pit. All the cars got away cleanly. Through Eau Rouge, the order was as in practice. Graham Hill, McLaren, Taylor, Mayress, Gregory and Arnold. Coming to La Source, Hill held a slim lead over Taylor. McLaren was third, and Jim Clark a fantastic fourth, up from twelfth on the grid. The Ferrari of Meres was in fifth place. By lap two, Trevor Taylor's Lotus led, followed by McLaren, Meres, Graham Hill and Clark. Baghetti had already stopped with ignition trouble. Rob checked the times, but Trantino was simply not quick enough and was lying well back. Trevor Taylor still led for Team Lotus, with McLaren, Meres, Clark and Hill all nose to tail behind. Teammates Rodriguez and Phil Hill were sixth and seventh, with Innes Ireland 8th. The five leading cars were having a tremendous battle and were continually passing and repassing one another. Trantignon was 13th, but his engine was not at its best. On the fourth lap, there was a tremendous cheer from the crowd as Belgian mayoress appeared in the lead the other four cars still snapping at his heels.
through Eau Rouge, it was Mayress, Taylor, McLaren, Hill and Clark. These five were now well ahead of the chasing Ferrari duo. After waiting and watching, Clark had moved from fifth to first in little over a single lap. Arlen didn't like the handling of his Lotus and came in, whereupon his UDT mechanics found the rear wishbone mountings were on the point of collapse. Trantignon was given his time, five seconds behind de Beaufort. He really was struggling. Clark now started to pull away from the four cars behind him. Graham Hill's BRM was another with ignition trouble and he was struggling to stay with the leading group. Phil Hill and Rodriguez were still in close company, often overtaking one another, sometimes unnecessarily. Innes Ireland had gone over to tell Colin Chapman about his broken Lotus. The UDT team had brought in Maston Gregory as a precaution. Clark now led by about 10 seconds from Taylor, who could not shake off Merez. The Hill and Rodriguez Ferraris were about to lap Trantignon. Merez passed Taylor. These two were having a tough battle for second place. Bruce McLaren walked home after losing his oil pressure. Taylor and Mares continued to change places, still lapping at over 131 miles an hour. Rob was in the unusual position of not being in the picture at all. The absence of Sterling certainly showed in the team's performance. Jim Clark was now lapping in 3 minutes 56 seconds, pulling away at over 2 seconds per lap. Trevor Taylor and Mares seemed to get close to each other. Taylor's inexperience pitched against Meresi's exuberance. And then on lap 26, the inevitable happened. The cars touched at over 100 miles an hour. The Lotus knocked down a telegraph pole and crashed into a ditch. The Ferrari caught fire and landed upside down. Luckily, both drivers were flung out of their cars, and so were okay. The other cars were forced to pass by the scene of the accident very cautiously. The race continued with the two remaining Ferraris now in third and fourth place. The second works Cooper of South African Tony Maggs retired with gearbox troubles. Clark now held a very secure lead over Graham Hill's still spluttering BRM. Surtees slowed past the Lotus pit to tell them that he had seen Taylor and that Trevor was uninjured. Taylor, in his obvious yellow overalls, was paraded in front of Clark to show Jimmy that he was indeed unhurt. Clark was now able to tour home, having driven a well-judged and intelligent race.
sheep farmer from the Scottish borders, thus took his first victory. Graham Hill was second, and Phil Hill just pipped teammate Rodriguez for third on the line.